But suffice to say, we now have a clip launcher inside of Studio One, which is very, very cool. And you have this scene play playlist, which is a panel that you can open up on the side here. You don't have to have it open, but you can do. And actually, I recommend that you do because you can trigger the individual scenes in any order you like, and you can set the trigger mode and the quantized value basically when the next scene starts, what value you want that to be. I have that set to one bar and the launch mode set to trigger, but you could have this as a toggle or as a gate as well. So uh, basically what I did was I went and grabbed a whole bunch of different things, different samples from this guy here. So um, this is a new folder that you will get um, in Studio One Pro 7. And it's called the Studio One Launcher Loops. And there are different styles and there are different uh, tempos and different keys um, for each of these. Um, there's loads. Um, so the only one I'm using here is the sole one. Um, but you can you can set this to whatever you want and you can make any combination of any of these. So you could have different tempos and all sorts and they will all kind of resolve and be at the at the correct tempo for what you're doing. Um, and this is found in the construction kits folder, which is in the loops tab of your browser. And uh, you'll see it here called Studio One Launcher Loops. And basically this is just a bunch of loops that you can put into, into here. You can record directly onto these cells as well, um, but you have to have a corresponding track. And you'll see that these arrows here um, these arrows basically uh, tell you what is in focus, either the cells and scenes in the launcher or what is on the tracks. So if it's set this way, notice how the uh, the cells on this track now are uh, dimly lit. And that means that what's on the track here is in focus. But if I click it back, now that lights up and now this is back in focus. So what I've done here is I've just got three scenes of loops that I threw together from this Sol folder um, to try and come up with something that sounds vaguely musical and can be uh, done as an arrangement. Like I said, you can record directly into the cells themselves. So if you want to have like a little vocal sample or something like that in each cell, you can actually record directly to that. And I will demonstrate that in my more detailed uh, separate video. But suffice to say, let's just give this a play and I will play these different scenes and you'll see how they work. So I want to start with scene one. You get the idea, but uh, you can uh, create up to eight scenes. If I expand this out, you'll see that you can do that. So there are eight default. If you want to add a new scene, then you just click this button here. And if you want to stop any particular uh, row of cells, you can do that with these stop buttons um, and so on and so forth. So you've got complete control over over these and you can trigger these from something like the Atom or the Atom SQ. 
you can trigger scenes from the same. Um, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate that because I don't have um, the right setup to be able to do that. Um, but suffice to say that you can, and I believe that Gregor will be doing a video that demonstrates that. So um, check out his video on the launcher if you want to see the launcher done in detail and being triggered from um, hardware controller devices. Um, but I'm not going to be able to cover that. But suffice to say, we have a launcher. It's pretty cool. If you come from um, something like Ableton Live, then you'll kind of know what this is already and you'll have a head start on this. This is all completely brand new to me. This is um, this is not familiar territory for me at all, which is why I'm kind of fudging my way through showing it to you. But like I said, I'll do a bit more of a detailed video showing you how you can do some extra stuff like recording into cells and that kind of thing in a separate standalone video.